Well, good afternoon to someone else's question and answers. I noticed that, uh, that our friend Paul Messner uh, posted a comment on his community, cap, community page asking people's questions. Well, obviously my channel's not big enough to get many questions, so we're going to nick his questions. And while we're doing that, we're going to have a nice cup of tea because it's a little bit on the chilly side out and and i think we definitely definitely you know need a tea to warm us up a little bit so the first question was what is the best uh jacket that's not gore-tex well probably the the only answer to that that i can give with my experience is probably paramo um, but obviously paramo can only really be used, you know, when it's, when it's cold. I'd like to try buffalo one day, and I have ordered some buffalo mix. So we're kind of, you know, that's my introduction to buffalo when they arrive, which will be this week. So that's my Christmas present to myself. I will admit, I, I've tried other waterproof items and I have gone back to Gore-Tex because um, I was finding that other things I was getting wet, wet in, really. So I must admit, I have gone back to Gore-Tex. Um, I don't think the channel will ever be big enough that other companies will send out, you know, other things. But obviously, if anyone sends out something, I'd certainly, <laughs> I'd certainly try it. And maybe if the channel grows and you all like and subscribe and share and smash that stomp that Godzilla um, notification button, you know, and the channel grows and we get a little bit more money. Uh, uh, one recommendation, don't get married because it usually ends up where you end up going your own way. And then that usually ends up costing the husband. If, if it wasn't that part, then it was all the bit leading up to that part. Um, ends up costing the husband a small fortune, which then means you can't get some of the camping stuff or <laughs> hiking stuff that you might have wanted to get, you know, to try. So you, I kind of limited myself as to what I could do um, now. Another question is, if you could make your dream tent, what would it be? To be honest, probably my dream tent is the MLD Trail Star because it's very light. It gives you acres of space inside and it's good in, in all weathers and it's ridiculously light, you know, for what it is. So, you know, realistically, the Trail Star, you know, is, is my dream tent and and yeah, this, this is very nice. You know, this is a, the Hilleberg Namash 2. This is incredibly nice, but it's three kilograms. And do I want to be carrying, you know, three kilograms very far by myself? No, probably, probably not. But it's a very similar weight to the Sulu. And what would I rather have? The Sulu, you know, which is also knocking on the door of three kilograms or this, you know, and just give me this any day of the week. You know, the porch is massive. I've got tons of space inside. Um, so yeah, but you just, you can't get this. This is the problem. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to buy this. I'm rubbing my hands together in, 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 in the hope that my friend will sell this to me at a very, very reasonable price. <laughs> He's over in America, so, you know, maybe, we'll, maybe the Americans have to kidnap him or something like that. I've put all my jackets on, so I've got my... I've got a t-shirt, I've got a wind, st uh, wind shirt, no shirt today. I did bring it, it's here. I thought I'd leave the arrow shirt behind for this trip. And wear it every single time. And then my Arcteryx Atom SL and then my Arcteryx. Um, I think this is, a, I, I don't know what this one is. 
I, I, I was thinking it's an Atom, but I don't think it is because it hasn't got the stretch panels in the side. So I still don't know what insulated um, Arcteryx jacket this is. It's the one without the stretch fleece panels in the side. Tell me, someone tell me once and for all what it is, but I really don't think it's the Atom because the Atom has the stretch panels I'm pretty sure. So I think it's something else, but it's getting to the point now where I've lost, I've lost eight kilograms now, and it's a size small, and it's getting to the point where, you know, where it, well, it's always kind of fitted me, but my fat stomach didn't exactly help, but getting to the point where I can get into it again, which is, encouraging. Tony's weight loss scheme is eat less food. It's as simple as that. No booze, which I didn't drink anyway, um, and just eat less and um, a bit more walking. I'm just gonna make my tea a minute. So actually while I'm making my tea, so what was the question again? <laughs> oh yeah, the tent, so we've answered that. Foot, <laughs> wash it. Hey, obviously I'm not Paul. Um, what's your thoughts on footprints, modding tents to attach them permanently? Oh, well, that's a good question, isn't it? I bet Paul's going to love footprints. <laughs> he strikes me as a footprint, footprint person. I think they're a complete and utter waste of time, space, weight, bulk. I just don't get the point of them at all. Yeah, they might give you some um, underground, you know, some protection under. I can see on some surfaces, you know, on some surfaces, they might be, you know, like gravel, stone, brick, rock. <laughs> you know, they, they might be, they might be useful. But I mean, out here where we're on grass most of the time, why? I, I, I see no point on grass. Maybe if you're on slightly twiggier ground or something, but then, you know, we usually carry some foam matting with us. I mean, I've, I've got a, a sheet of it that I'm lying on in here, which I've put on top of the ground sheet here, because this is a Hillyberg ground sheet, so I think this will last fine. But if the ground was a little bit suspect, then the foam mat that you have, which you're probably carrying anyway, and if you're not, why, why are you not? Um, you know, then I would, I would put the foam mat under the ground sheet. Because, you know, when you're walking, you've got something to sit on. When you're in camp, you can use it as a footprint if you, you know, if the ground is rough, you know, I can understand you want to protect something. And I always find, you know, foam, a foam ground sheet or a, a foam mat really, really useful. You know, I've had times when I've had my tarp and I've had to pitch the tarp over rock. Well, obviously I don't want the tarp touching the rock. So in that instance, I use the foam matting as protection from the rock. So, you know, I, I, to me, a foam ground sheet is just so versatile. It's much more versatile than a, than a footprint. You know, a footprint is adding weight, it's adding bulk. Yeah, if you're gonna be flogging your tent on, as some people seem to like to do, yeah, you might, but, I've, I've seen Chris Town, I've got Chris Townsend's 10 year old Scarp One. And the ground sheet's in immaculate condition and he never uses a ground sheet, uh, never uses a footprint. And yet it's in very, very good condition still. So, you know, even if you're gonna be selling your tan, I really don't think it makes any difference at all. It's just marketing. Oh, I put a footprint down, therefore everything's in, you know, is in good condition. 
it's just it's just bullshit it really is i really 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 detest footprints and the idea of footprints <laughs> they help reduce condensation i hear what what condensation there is none you know this is clearly a very very dry you know arid environment here Clearly there's no moisture here and clearly we're dripping with condensation. They reduce condensation in the porch. Well, I've got a dog so I, I have put a uh, bed down there. I've, I've put this down there just so my feet can go on it for now. It doesn't make any difference whether you cover up the porch or not. I really don't see it makes any difference. You know, if you're really that worried about it, and you haven't got a dog, then obviously because Lassie goes there, then I brought the pack inside. Well, your pack's quite big. Just put your pack on the ground. You know, use, if you're that worried about it, use things that you already are carrying rather than adding weight and bulk. Unless you want to do rucking because you want to get rid of your fat stomach, you know, then obviously pile in a bit more, a bit more weight into your rucksack. So, you know, that's, but then, but then maybe pile in something else, you know, a 21 year old Blanco could be packed in there somewhere. <laughs> pack, in, pack in your blow up doll or something. Like, I don't know, whatever. You know, if you have to pack in your, your footprint because you want to add some weight, that's fine. But obviously I'm just saying that generally speaking, you know, unless you're looking to get some extra weight in your pack to lose a bit of weight, you really don't need a footprint. You can put something else down or you, they're not going to help against condensation because, you know, how much of the tent is taken up with, with the inner anyway? 80% of it. So 80% of your ground is covered. And if you've got a trail style like I often use or a duo mid or something, then it's 50% of the ground covered. And am I finding, generally speaking, 50% of the tent which is open and I'm still not getting very much, if any, condensation. It will happen from time to time, but it, it's just, it's rare. That's what I'm saying. And I think footprints are ridiculous. Anyway, what, what, what was the next, what was the next question? <laughs> I've lost my phone now. <laughs> Oh, don't get me going on footprints. <laughs> uh, what plans do you have for next year? Well, I wonder who asked him that question. <laughs> uh, you'll have to wait and see. We'll maybe come on to that later on. Right, for an unfit couple, just getting into hiking and wild camping, what would be your choice of challenge for 2024? Well, it depends on time. I mean, if you've got time, I mean, I don't know the lot. I don't know these walks, so I can't. I can't really comment on walks. If you've got time to do, uh, you know, a long, a long walk like the Cumbria Way for five days, then I think it's a five-day walk. Comment below. Uh, then you know, then do that, or, or or just get out regularly. You know, you don't you don't have to do a long-distance walk. Just get out really, really regularly and walk regularly. Uh, someone else says, what's your favourite YouTuber? Me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really watch so many outdoor YouTube channels. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Um, have you ever done the Appalachian Trail? No. Would you know? What's the best advice anyone has ever given you? Be yourself. <laughs> probably, probably when it comes to YouTube and, and this type of thing, yeah, I think they just say, you know, just do, do your own thing, Tony. When it comes to camping and hiking, just make sure you've got what keeps you safe and happy. And if you, and if you, and it's all very well me saying to you, don't get a heavy tent, don't get an expensive tent. You get get what get what you get what you want to get. Get what you are comfortable carrying. If you want, and don't you don't have to get light. Um, you don't have to get light. You get what you want. Um, 
you don't have to get expensive. But if you want expensive, get expensive. I like expensive stuff. Um, that's why I tend to, you know, save up and get the more expensive stuff. Um, but get, get what you want to get that keeps you safe, what you want to do. Do you have a bucket list of hikes, camps that you want to do? Not really, but I'm hoping to get up to Scotland more in 2024 with Chris. And, and, oh, and, and, um, and a couple of times now, two people have said, can you try a forest type camp? So I, I'll, try a, I'll try some forests or woods or something like that next year if I can find something. Comment below and I'll probably put it on the community page next year to remind me because I don't really know where to go. But two people have given two suggestions and they both sounded different places, but they were both up north. So, um, that, and I def definitely hope to do more with, with Chris Towns uh, next year. Now he's 74, it's kind of like Scotland always seemed a long way away, but now suddenly Scotland seems very close. And I've known him 20 years and I kind of wish I'd done more with him up to now. So let's try and make up for time. And let's hope he goes on a long time more as well. Doesn't being alone in the wilderness at night give you the creeps? How do you deal with that feeling of being in the middle of nowhere in the dark or doesn't it bother you? Well, for me, it doesn't bother me. And in fact, for being stuck in a tent for days on end in one place, as I've done many times in my videos, doesn't bother me. One, I make YouTube videos. Two, I'm warm, I'm dry, I'm safe, I'm comfortable, I'm, I, I'm relaxing, chilled out, I'm eating, I'm drinking, tea. <laughs> um, I never understand why people have to bring booze out, but whatever, it's their thing. Um, I like watching films, sometimes YouTube if there's a signal, not usually outdoor stuff, but sometimes. And, you know, films and series and things like that. I, I don't get scared. Uh, maybe in the, maybe in the early maybe the early days I did. If you're interested in me like recapping in a separate video of uh, of my very early camps, just talking about them and feelings and thoughts, because it was quite different back then for me. So maybe that's something for another video. Comment below if you're if you're interested in that. I think the main thing that you have to think about, and I, and I don't like the dark, I'm scared of the dark. You know, I, I could be standing, or sitting I suppose, but I could be in the dark, and I, I get this like, this silly fear, and I certainly did when I was young, that there is something just beyond what I can't see in the dark, and there's something's going to pounce out at me and and that used to be really quite scary when I was young I still get it a bit now and when I was also very young we're well not even not even that young like 30 years old I was still had this thing where I'd be downstairs I turn the lights off I don't know why I didn't leave the upstairs light on but for I don't know and I'd run upstairs because I think something would be chasing me in the dark upstairs. So it, it is, it's mental. <laughs> you don't get much more mental than me. Um, and you just have to remember that there is nothing in the United Kingdom that's going to get you. You know, if you were in the Amazon forest, you know, or Africa or the Americas, <laughs> you know, then you might be thinking, is there a bear over there or something? Or is there a snake in the grass or, you know, whatever. But in this country, there is nothing there. You know, there, there is nothing that's, that's going to jump out at you. You know, you, you're, you're safer here than you are in the city centres at night. 
you know, that was going to be out here, you know, in the middle of the night. You know, the, the odds are like less than zero, really. So, yeah, so there's, there's nothing to worry about. So just come out uh, and know that you are safe. Just know that you are safe out here. Favourite places. Someone else asked about favourite places. Well, this is probably my favourite place just for coming out and just relaxing and doing nothing. Because you can't get here. There's no, it's parking is a nightmare around here. Um, there's nothing down here. <laughs> I, I did a video on, on, on this um, a few months ago. I, you know, you do get the odd bod walking around, but it's, it's very quiet down here on the south moors of, of Dartmoor. Um, but there is nothing to see and do down here. So if you want to see and do something, then go to the north moor because you've got the tours up there and there is more up there. Um, there is nothing to do down here. So I don't recommend coming down here at all. Um, you know, you'd be bored. There's dead animals in all the streams. All the water is polluted down here. So you can't drink from the waters here. You know, there are lions, there are tigers down here. I'm sure there are pit mambas, boa constrictors, killer farmers. Um, yeah, I don't recommend coming down this part at all. Tell us about the kit you take for the taboo topic of wild camping toilet needs. Well, everybody, you know, everybody panics about this. Just pee in your porch, you've got grass there. If you can't do that or you feel uncomfortable doing that, use that bit of foam that you've got, put it in your doorway or your ground or your footprint if you brought your footprint stand in the doorway and pee out the door. You don't have to put your boots and shoes and trousers and jackets on just for a pee. Just pee out your door. Really, 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 really simple. Um, obviously, number two, trowel, toilet paper. You know, what I tend to do is after I've eaten something, uh, you know, then you've got a wrapper, then your toilet paper goes in the wrapper and then that goes in your waist and, and always have a bag, which I haven't got to hand at the moment. But, you know, when, when the monster eats her food, then you've got a bag to hand and then you can just put it in there. Girls, I guess the girls maybe have a pot, maybe have a pot like a margarine pot or something like that and whack that down there, piddle in your pot and then just tip it out the door. Um, that seems the most sensible thing easiest thing to me um, and obviously if you're doing a number two just like I think it's like 200 meters away from from water and bury it uh, someone else any advice on decent snow hiking boot brands please um, not really because at the moment I've got an old pair of Salomon trousers which I've had for trousers salomon boots that i've had for about eight years and i have it on good authority that salomon are not very good these days um but we'll, we'll give them a go eight years ago they were quite decent other than that i don't know but i'm hoping to get snow camping with chris next year what's been my most memorable camp and why I don't think one is more memorable. They're all memorable. Wow. They're all enjoyable. They're all, they're all very, very, you know, they're all different. They're all enjoyable. Even the ones when I come here, the same place, they're all enjoyable. So I wouldn't say that I have one that's more memorable. I mean, I mean the ones with Chris, up in Scotland, they're probably, you know, they're probably amongst the more memorable ones. Yeah, I just enjoy them all. Well, I can't say any one is more than, than any others, really. Comment below. The people who watch these videos, you probably know better than me <laughs> which are the more memorable ones. If someone else um, asked favourite place to camp, well, obviously Dartmoor, around, you know, Dartmoor, but I have gone to Wales, which I've enjoyed, Lake District, which I've enjoyed, um, Peak District, which I've enjoyed, and obviously Scotland with Chris, which I've enjoyed. And we'll kind of go from there, really. But I've, I've enjoyed them all. And as I've done more, I have got more adventurous 
you know, with finding camps and, and such like. Someone says, what's the strangest thing you've encountered camping? Nothing, because I don't have creepy things walking around the tents or things bumping into me at night or scary things happening or so. I don't, don't think I've had a strange, strangest thing is the fact that is there anybody, anybody bothers watching me? But I think, I think the ones that do enjoy it. If you had to choose one cook set for 12 months, which one would you choose and why? Trail Designs Sidewinder, it's a no-brainer. It's super lightweight. You can't knock it over. Yeah, there's nothing else to say. Uh, I, I use other things because they're very good. I like the, you know, I like obviously the, this, I forgot what it's called now. I like that, I like the, you know, the X-Boil is really good. I like the X-Boil, I highly recommend those. They're very good. Um, Cause trail designs won't easily ship to here. Um, one tip, if you're buying something from uh, Mountain Laurel Designs, I have it on reasonable authority that if you also buy something from Trail Designs, like a Sidewinder or something of theirs, um, talk between them and one might ship to Tava and then uh, Ron MLD might ship here for you. I'm not, I can't guarantee, but I have heard people have done that. So that's something, um, you know, that's one way, that's one way around, you know, getting something from Trail Designs here. Or if you know someone in America, have it shipped to someone else in America and then get them to ship it here. Um, you know, I'm sure there are, there are ways, uh, uh, there probably are ways around it. Um, walk with Wallace. Hello, Robin. Um, any long distance trails planned for 2024? No, but, like I said, you know, I'm hoping to do something with Chris, which will be a bit. So we'll kind of see what happens with, with that. Would you, who, so Grizzly Gaz, hello Grizzles, Grizzly Gaz. Who would be your top five YouTube collabs, except me, him, of course. Well, I'm hoping to do something with Sandy next year, Wiltshire man. That I think is pretty much, Penned in, I think we're def I think that's definite. I'd like to do something with Andy Beavers. I have mentioned it a few times. Nothing's happened yet. I mean, Chris Townsend does do YouTube, so obviously um, him. Patrick Dickinson would be really interesting, but I don't think he does collabs with anybody. So, and to be honest, the people that I tend to camp with don't do YouTube. I've noticed. <laughs> I comment below and then message them and say you'd like Tony to collab with you and do a camp with with that person and let me know who it is. But yeah, it would be would be interesting to do, of you know, do things with with other YouTubers. I mean, Paul Messner has mentioned, but he never gets back to me. So I, I, I don't know whether Paul really wants to camp with me. I, I think I'm quite different to the type of stuff that, that he does and his viewers and so I don't know. Okay, well Grizzly Gaz asks about tra tra transitioning oh, oh, to a full time. No, well I, I don't do YouTube full time so that one doesn't count. I wonder what you meant when you were talking about transitioning. <laughs> um, um, but what really motivated you to start filming for YouTube? It's a lot of work, right? Uh, well, again, that's maybe a video I could do because that's how it all started for me like 12 years ago. In a nutshell, wife died of cancer. We'd already been coming out here tons and tons. I enjoyed the walking. I wanted to do camping, but at the time she wasn't it really interested, but I always wanted to. Somehow I found MLD. I took my camera, I took my phone and did vid um, videos with the phone just for two or three people or one person or nobody. And it just 
well, it, I can't say it really ballooned from there, but it, uh, it just kind of went from there, really. And then I just enjoyed filming. That's kind of how I started. Um, probably for Paul, it's a lot of work. It is, though. I mean, it is. I mean, I use a separate recorder um, for, for audio. So you do have to, but it's, it doesn't take too long. But it, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it, it is a bit of work. Yeah, more super thanks, more subscribers, more likes, because it's, it's really, really hard work and it, it, and it needs more remuneration. So um, I will now promote myself. Um, this, this video is sponsored by, by me. <laughs> By, by Squarehead, by Squarehead. 